Oh yeah, I said it. Click app sucks. That's what happens if you don't do your setup right and just don't listen. So I wanna talk with you today about how bad click up sucks and what you can do about to make it suck less. Hey everybody, I'm Yvonne with AskEvie.com and I am a business efficiency consultant for digital entrepreneurs. If you're ready to streamline your business to skyrocket your sales, you are perfect right here as I upload weekly videos to make your life easier and more streamlined, more automated, more simple. So if you haven't done so yet, go hit the subscribe button and click the bell so you get notified every time I upload a new video. Now, without further ado, let's dive into my bold statement of click up sucks. And honestly, it does. It has a ton of features, a ton of possibilities for you to set it up wrong and use it wrong. And no blaming here. I have gone through so many reiterations of so many versions. It's like, heck, if you watch my social media marketing video with the big space, we already rearranged that thing again because we learned that there's a better way to run this. Now, no finger pointing here. As I said, click up sucks because it gives you so many possibilities to set this up. And coming from other project management tools, nobody telling you best practices or how you should use it, click up is going to suck donkey balls. So today I want to show you how you can make it suck less. And let's start with number one, biggest mistake ever. Do not use ClickUp like you use Trello. It's not how it's built. It's not how you do reporting. So let's dive onto my screen and show you what I'm talking about. What you see here is a common way how others use Trello. You have in statuses, references and admin sales process. This right here is literally a Trello board imported. This is a workflow I'm working on from my speaker couch that we are pulling into ClickUp to make this actually actionable because this is just a collection of information and we'll get to that issue later on. Rather than doing these statuses, you need to do those as stages. Your statuses should be nothing else than is somebody working on that task or are they not working? Common statuses are to do, in progress, waiting on client, waiting internally and complete it. Not more. You should not have more than five task statuses and task statuses should always be action oriented, not timeline oriented not work oriented. Now, how do you handle those when you shouldn't use stages, what I call them, as statuses? Now, if you're looking at my marketing space, you're gonna see exactly what I'm talking about. Those stages that you just saw on that speaker board from left to right, which talk about certain timelines or stages of the task, those should be a custom drop-down field. And then when it comes to your board view, when we are talking about what the task actually goes through, that's it. To do in process, to prove there is another status that is totally viable as well as complete. Now, why? Because we want to use ClickUp to look in the big picture as well as the small picture. And the statuses like we had on that speaker setup, those are not usable anywhere else ever again. So 95% of the time, use statuses that are actionable. Everything else becomes stage. If you can see, I'm in my everything view now and already here because I haven't cleaned everything up yet. You see, you can't get the big picture. Look at this. Who is going to scroll through this kind of stuff? Not to mention when you go into your box view and you're trying to figure out what your team is up to, Look at this list under unassigned. How many different statuses we have in here? Who the hell is going to try to figure out what's happening in your company? So to reiterate, statuses are actionable statuses on what the task is doing right now. Is it processing? Is it not processing? That's it. Everything else, go make that a drop down menu as a stage and go look in list view. And you even can then sort your list view by that custom field 
stage and you will have a nice list top to bottom. Second reason why your ClickUp sucks is you don't have your workflows down. And I talked about that in my last video, so I'm not gonna dive too much into this, but how are you going to be able to build a structure in ClickUp when you haven't even laid out your workflow, you have no flow chart down, you have no idea what's happening, you have no idea which task follows which task. If you don't know your business, ClickUp is not gonna solve that for you. This is not a ha ah, fairy godmother is coming, whipping her wand and gonna fix all of your problems. If the structure in your business isn't there, you're not gonna be able to build that structure in your business. So if you're ready to build structure in your business, go jump to my workflow video, watch that. It'll help you lay all of that out and make your ClickUp suck less. Reason number three, your ClickUp sucks. You use ClickUp as a data collection tool. I have seen it so often as of late where people put their SOPs, standard operating procedures, which by the way, we got a video on too, as a task in ClickUp. That's not what ClickUp is for. ClickUp is a task management tool. That means your tasks are supposed to go in here. If you are collecting data, if you are writing SOPs, any of those things, that is supposed to go in documents. You need to attach that to a task, meaning you might have a task that says, research private pilot license. What does it cost? Are there any grants? All of that kind of stuff. Cool, you set up the task for pilot license research, always a mouthful, and you set a due date to that. You assign it to yourself because you're the one who wants to get a pilot license. You then attach your research to that task. Do not add your SOPs as a task. Go watch the SOP video so you know how to set those up. Last but not least, reason number four, your ClickUp sucks, because you make everything a main task. People, really? I got off a discovery call with a really nice gentleman. Love the guy, he is awesome. Went a little bit further than just us meeting and I'm like, why in God's name are you putting a workflow with about 150 steps all into main tasks? Literally, a list of main tasks of 150, which is one workflow. That's a standard workflow. But what you need to do is like, let's, let's jump back on my screen. What you need to do is those 150 tasks or how many tasks ever need to be grouped. So find a way that makes sense to it. Is it the onboarding stage? Is it product research? Is it marketing? Try to put them in little buckets. And what you do then is that bucket then has sub tasks, meaning one main task with five, 10, 15 different subtasks. Because if you don't do that, you are suddenly gonna have per workflow, 100 and 150 main tasks, which easily can happen. If a workflow is built right with all the steps, with all the information, that's a normal number on tasks. But you or your team is gonna look at this list of 100 tasks, and you're gonna be like, oh, hell no. I'm never gonna be able to get all of this done. No, mm -mm, not doing this. You're gonna feel overwhelmed. You're gonna feel like you're never gonna get this done. You don't have the time to get this done. You're just gonna glaze over, go back to bed and Netflix. You don't wanna do that. And you can't work in stages with that either. You need to find a way that combines having all the information and still be able to be productive because you are not overwhelmed by all of the shh stuff in here. So please, for whatever that's holy to you, do not put everything in main tasks. Group it how it makes sense, make use of the subtasks, make use of the subtask due date remapping, make use of dependencies and one hidden feature, you get that just because you stayed this long in the video, dependency remapping. Yes, we don't just have subtask remapping, we have dependency remapping too. And if you don't know what that is, go Google it. There is a document with ClickUp that tells you exactly what that thing does. Okay, let's rehash this whole thing. What are you not supposed to do? Your ClickUp is gonna suck if you try to use it like Trello. Heck, even if you just try to use it like Asana. This tool has its own way of working. 
you need structure and workflow. If you don't know how your business is gonna work, ClickUp is not gonna save you. Stop using it as a data collection tool. Use documents, attach them to a task. In here, you really should just have tasks where you attach your information to it. Do not use statuses as stages. Keep your statuses simple, actionable. Is somebody working on it or are they not working on it? Are we waiting for information or not? That's the only statuses you should have. The only exception to that is if you set up your ClickUp as a CRM. There is 5% of the time a reason to do different statuses. Usually just go with actionable. Do not use ClickUp like you use Trello. And last but not least, Stop making everything a main task. You are not helping yourself. You are not gonna get productive with it. You're not gonna get anything done. And now that you know why your ClickUp sucks and why you can't stand ClickUp or why you are frustrated, let me know below what's the issue you've been struggling with. What's the one that is like, oh, that's why ClickUp has been so difficult to me. We've all done it. Guys, I've been there. I focused so hard on board view till it finally snapped and list view makes so much sense now. We've all been there, we've all done it. Let's have some fun with it. And if you're new here and you made it this far and you haven't subscribed yet, come on, give me a little love. Go hit the subscribe button and the bell so you get notified next time I'm having fun with you again.